Good morning and welcome to the Reclamation webinar on the recently published Federal Register Notice regarding the post-2026 2026 operations for Lake Powell and Lake Mead. Before we begin, we just have a couple of housekeeping items. If you're having technical issues, please disconnect and join again. Additionally, you may have better success connecting to the Microsoft Teams app on your computer. And this is not the web browser and not in the web browser, sorry. This event is being recorded. If you are not interested in being recorded, please disconnect at this time. We will have time for questions on the process following the presentation. And if you have a question, please click the raise hand icon and we'll take them in the order they are received. If you have a comment to submit, you may submit it at crb-info at usbr.gov. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Carly Jurla. Carly is a Senior Water Resources Program Manager with Reclamation and will lead the post-2026 process. Carly? Thank you, Chelsea, and thanks to all of you who have joined us here today. As many of you know, on June 24th, Reclamation published a Federal Register notice requesting input from Colorado River Basin partners, stakeholders, and the public on how we develop and address the longer term strategies for post 2026 operations. In today's webinar, I will describe the purpose and content of this notice, as well as what areas reclamation is specifically speaking input on and how to go about submitting that input. I'd also like to note what is not the purpose of today's webinar. We're not asking for your ideas on the topics in the notice today. We simply want to give everyone an overview of the purpose of the notice and the method for the submission of the input for us to consider. I note that today's session is the second of two webinars and that both are intended to be identical sessions. The first occurred Tuesday of this week, July 12th. So thank you for your time and interest regarding these critically important matters. The purpose of today's informational webinar is to summarize the content of the Federal Register Notice. This is the second of two webinars being offered, both with identical content, and the first was held on Tuesday. The purpose of these webinars, again, is not to receive input that is being asked for in the notice. You can submit that input to the email address listed here, and we are looking for this input by September 1st. The purpose of the Federal Register Notice. Um, as many of you know, several key agreements that govern the operation of Lake Powell and Lake Mead expire at the end of 2026. These include the December 2007 Colorado River Interim Guidelines for Lower Basin Shortages and Coordinated Operations for Lake Powell and Lake Mead. Uh, we shorthand that the 2007 Interim Guidelines. The 2019 Drought Contingency plan agreements, as well as international agreements between the United States and Mexico pursuant to the 1944 Water Treaty, or Minute 323 is um, the minute we are operating under currently. Reclamation intends to formally initiate the NEPA process in early 2023 to develop the successor to the 2007 interim guidelines. Successor agreements to Minute 323 with Mexico will be conducted through the International Boundary and Water Commission. However, the department is committed to identifying processes that can complement those important efforts. The purpose of the notice is to receive input on both the process and substance of those post-2026 operations prior to starting the formal NEPA process. We are using this as a tool to seek input and encourage brainstorming prior to the process so that we can use that input to shape the process. And this notice is the first preliminary step in what, in what will be a much longer process to develop those long-term operations. In addition, for, in addition to asking for input, the notice makes three observations regarding change circumstances in the basin since the current operating guidelines were adopted in 2007. We do this to provide a foundation for the input that we are asking for. With respect to hydrology, risk, and advances in science, We've been experiencing unprecedented drought and additional responsive actions were needed 
for example, the drought contingency plans to address the increasing system risk. Climate science agrees that temperatures will continue to warm and future policies need to be tested against drought sequences that are longer and more severe than those observed. With respect to partner stakeholder participation in Colorado River decision making, in the last 15 years, there has been an increasing level of collaboration, including a greater desire for tribal inclusivity. And with regard to Mexico, future management of Colorado River, Colorado River reservoirs should continue to achieve the appropriate level of operational alignment with our partners in Mexico. The notice also highlights the dire state of the system, the declining hydrology and system storage, and recognizes that the processes to develop and implement near-term response actions may need to proceed on parallel timelines. So with this said, we are looking for input in two specific areas. The first, process steps, and the second, substantive elements and strategies. So regarding process, we are looking for input on specific ideas, suggested mechanisms to use in the anticipated NEPA process to ensure that meaningful engagement and participation by a wide range of basin partner stakeholders and the public. And regarding substantive elements, we are looking for specific suggestions on what the post-2026 operations should include and also how to best analyze those operations. Lastly, I would like to reiterate that we are interested in see receiving specific recommendations in these areas, as these can be more easily potentially integrated into the initiation of the NEPA process for post-2026. That is, ideas that we can consider as our approach to the post-2026 effort is being developed. So in closing, I would like to thank you all very much for your time today and for your consideration of these important issues. We look forward to receiving your input and your involvement as we continue through this process. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you, Carly. If you have any questions on the process, please click the raise hand icon and we'll take questions in order you have submitted them. If you also may submit questions at the email crb-info at usbr.gov, which has also been listed in the chat. Please keep to questions only. We, we will mute you and turn off your camera otherwise. First question, uh, phone number 9655. You can unmute yourself. Phone number 9655. Okay, your hand went down. Uh, Roger McManus. You may unmute your mic and turn on your camera. Thank you. Can you hear me OK? Yes, we can. OK. Um, my question is, uh, is with regards to the scope of the EIS. Um, uh, I know their emphasis, and, and understandably so, has been on the lakes and management with respect to the lakes. However, um, this process will certainly impact the Colorado River uh, throughout its entirety down to our obligations and responsibilities with respect to Mexico. Um, so I, I'm just seeking a little clarification to the degree that uh, uh, the Bureau is going to be addressing the uh, ecosystem as a whole and the impacts of the management regime to the ecosystem as a whole, as opposed to just managing, and I don't mean just in a cavalier manner at all, but uh, focused management on the uh, uh, lakes. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you for your question. Um, I will first start out by saying the, the scope of the NEPA effort has not yet been determined. Um, that will be one of the first things that happens when the formal process is started and anticipated to be in early 2023. Um, so we do not know the scope of that effort. With respect to the, the scope within the United States and activities in Mexico, 
the NEPA effort will cover the US actions and the discussions with Mexico will be handled um, through the International Boundary and Water Commission. It will be two separate processes, uh, but we will coordinate closely with the IBWC um, on that effort. To the extent uh, that you have input um, or opinions with respect to how those processes can be complemented or what that scope might look like in the uh, US, I, I would encourage you to submit that input to the email address provided here. So thank you for the question. Reminder, if you have a question, please use the raise hand icon and we will call on you. You can also submit questions in the chat if you would not like to speak. If you have called in via phone, you can use star six to raise your hand. John Bergen, I'm going to unmute your mic and allow your camera. Feel free to speak. OK, yeah, um, thanks, Carly. It's just super helpful. I was curious if you could expand a little bit more when you said um, the notice does highlight the dire state of the system and you there may need to be near term actions on the same time frame as this uh, NEPA process develops. And I was just wondering if you could expand on that and whether one will come at the expense of the other or any anticipation uh, challenges with doing both near term actions and this longer term NEPA process. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, yes, the notice does uh, highlight the current conditions on the system and recognizes that although we intend to initiate a NEPA process for the post 2026 operations that given the current dire conditions, um, multiple efforts may be needed or other appropriate processes to address these emerging low reservoir conditions. Um, it's kind of impossible to say what exactly those processes may look like um, or how one will be handled at the expense of the other, but that is an area that we would be interested in your input on. Thank you for the question. The next question in chat is from George. How can the public learn more about the current post 2026 plan? Yes, thank you for that question. Um, we. Again, that is an area that we are seeking input on. I think that falls under process. It is our desire um, to develop a process that is inclusive, transparent, um, and also easy to follow in terms of public understanding. Um, we, when we do initiate the NEPA process, um, it will have all of the opportunities for public comment, um, milestones, and we will be um, really prioritizing, uh, trying to engage the public. But, and we will have an active website and everything that goes along with that. But I think your question also falls in the category for us regarding process in terms of where we are looking for specific areas of, of input. And so if you have specific thoughts on that, uh, we would we would welcome hearing that. So thank you. If you have a question, reminder to use the raise hand icon and we will call on you. Give it a couple minute or two for more comments to come in. OK, it looks like we have a comment from a phone call. It's 9655 is the last four of the number. Uh, loud your mic, you can speak now.
person on the phone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Hi. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for this. I guess uh, my, my question is is regarding the level of detail that uh, you're, you're looking for. Um, just as a for instance, I was looking at some of the 2012 water basin study um, options, and they range from like a couple pages, very high level uh, versus, you know, you could, you know, when, if there's one option like importing water from the Mississippi and the Missouri. Obviously, you could, you know, write books and hundreds of pages on versus versus a high level overview. So I'd be curious, like what what is the level of detail that would be most uh, helpful for you to evaluate um, feedback? Yeah, th thank you. Great question. Um, as this is just a this is the preliminary step, um, which to what will be a much larger NEPA process. At this point, we're looking for specific input on substantive elements and operational strategies um, to use to shape the development of the anticipated NEPA process. And um, I hope that 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 you can kind of consider that and use that to think about what what level of detail you think makes the most sense from your standpoint. Okay, Thank great. you. Thank you. And you, you said substantive. What was that phrase? Substantive elements, elements, substantive elements and, and operational strategies. OK, great. Thank you. The next question is from Roger McManus. Yes. Um, uh, I guess the uh, question, I, you may have responded to it adequately for this time period, but the, the question about uh, getting water from uh, the Mississippi Valley all the way to Arizona uh, sounds like a huge, huge political and substantive problem. Um, and uh, uh, I would assume that uh, uh, we will be uh, focusing on on that to some degree, but um, uh, how how would you pose trying to approach that issue with all the legal and uh, political ramifications that might be involved, including the fact that the people in the Mississippi Valley uh, are going to have their own water issues in the future? And uh, I don't know, it just seems like a horrendous investment of time and effort on the part of the Bureau to uh, try and look at that option in detail and get public comment on it. Sorry about the lengthy sort of diatribe there. <laughs> um, yep, thank you for that. I, I would I would just say that uh, the scope um, or neither the scope um, nor anything else regarding the post 2026 process has been determined. At this point, um, we're really just in the preliminary phase again, seeking input on process and substantive elements. And I would encourage you if you have um, input regarding that topic that you think it would be important for us to consider as we develop um, the start of this formal process to submit it. Thank you. And we have a question in the chat from George again. Uh, question about the current dire situation any reliable official resource for the general public to read about i would say they can visit our colorado river basin page here it's www.usbr.gov colorado river basin and that's going to be the official resource for all of the information we have a comment from a james sternlicht you may unmute yourself and turn on your camera if you'd like. Hello. Uh, all right, I guess that's working. OK, cool. Um, so I've been looking at this problem for last month or so, and I'm wondering to what degree uh, USDA and other uh, federal and state organizations are looking at this problem as well. 
Uh, it appears from the water usage metrics coming out of the Colorado River Basin that somewhere between 60 and 80% of the water is used for agriculture. Um, at 15 million foot acres, you know, assuming we're talking about, you know, roughly 10 million foot acres of that is going to agriculture. And given that, it seems like the remaining uh, four and a half to five million that's going to residential commercial wouldn't be the best place to do the reduction because uh, while cities like Las Vegas ha have learned to serve uh, more people with less water, uh, ditch irrigation in Arizona, for instance, uh, around alfalfa and cotton seem to be wasteful water methods, whereas implementing things like drip irrigation uh, and center pivot irrigation, uh, as well as implementing vertical agriculture technologies uh, can reduce water usage by 40 to 70 percent. So I'm just wondering what level of interagency cooperation is there in shaping the, the NEPA process? Uh, and how are we looking at investing in American farmers to significantly reduce their water usage uh, so that we can not only reclaim water, but reclaim land uh, and improve our efficiency you know, into the future? Uh, with you know the eye to the fact that California, beyond Colorado River water usage, uh, does suffer from this problem and the technologies could be implemented there as well as to combat problems in the future in the Mississippi River Basin and elsewhere. Yes, thank you for your question. Um, to, the, to the part of the question about interagency cooperation, um, I will assure you that we do coordinate and cooperate uh, closely with not only our sister agencies in the department, but also related agencies and other departments, um, because we are still early in the process and have not initiated our formal NEPA process. We have not determined um, cooperating agencies to that process, but it'll be a topic that we prioritize and will be keenly focused on um, as we approach the end of this year. Um, and with respect to your comments on um, you know, the role of agriculture uh, in the Colorado River Basin and, and reductions and such, um, I would just encourage you to submit your input regarding um, those matters uh, uh, through to the Federal Register notice um, and any strategies or, or specific substantive elements that that may come out of that. So thank you. Chelsea, I think you're on you're on mute. My apologies. <laughs> we have another question in the chat from George about substantive elements and operational strategies. And I put the website in the chat for anybody that would like it. Um, our next question, it looks like, is from Brian Crook. You may unmute yourself and turn on your camera if you'd like. Yeah, thanks, Chelsea. Carly, I was wondering if you could provide any detail on the ongoing CRSS modeling and what might be necessary in terms of coordination between the NEPA team and that ongoing modeling. Um, yes, thank you for your question. Um, the, the CRSS model is the Colorado River Simulation System. It is Reclamation's official long-term planning tool. Um, it was used uh, to develop the 2007 interim guidelines and it is constantly updated and has evolved pretty significantly um, since that time. Uh, it will be part of the process um, in the technical approach uh, as we uh, work through the post-2026 effort. Um, and we would encourage input on um, a process standpoint in terms of the technical process uh, for us falls under that umbrella of what we're looking for with respect to process, as well as any um, substantive uh, strategies regarding um, the analysis of any operational strategies. So, so thank you for that question. Thank you. Our next question is from 
Kenneth Saline. You may unmute your mic and turn on your camera if you'd like. Ed, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, you know, my, my observation is that in order to get good input on this, you we could really use a, a really good, I, I don't call it a high level survey of what is going on in the Colorado River Basin. For example, I hear the tension between water and, and quote, farming, but I, I don't think people understand that Arizona produces over 90% of the fresh produce in the United States in the wintertime. And so when you start making these decisions, you know, with people don't, not understanding that, you know, we're getting people making comments that make us choose between food and water. And as human beings, I think we need both. And so given that we don't have a really good background uh, uh, description of, you know, what does the Colorado River Basin produce? You know, I think that would really help a lot of people to provide, you know, some 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 input. I mean, we all have uh, uh, important issues in this that need to get out. But I think if we're going to maybe use our 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 uh, expanse of human computers here to find solutions, we really need to understand the real problem set that we're facing as humans, which is, I think we need food and water. And so now what are we going to do? You know, it's a, it's a pretty dire consequence if everyone understands what's really going on. And uh, I'll just say for the last year, Arizona took a 500,000 acre foot cut in water. And until you take those water cuts, you don't appreciate what it means. It's all talk and rhetoric until all of a sudden there's a canal without water in it. And there's people out there without water and they're drilling million dollar replacement wells and all across the Los Angeles basin and cities are going to be replacement wells going on added load hundred dollar power. We have a lot of issues to deal with and so I, I really think the Bureau in these times with the world situation and the Colorado River needs to really inform everyone in the basin. How much food do we produce? You know, how many people are is drinking this water, et cetera, and, and, and help us to make good decisions. Thank you. Thank you for that that comment and um, would encourage you to submit uh, uh, that type of input would be very helpful. So thank you. Our next question was in the chat from a Daryl, I'm sorry, I'm not going to try and pronounce your last name. Uh, what is in place to address the historic challenges of communication and partnership between tribal nations and federal agencies in order to ensure meaningful partnership and participation of tribal nations in this process? Yes, thank you for that very important question. Um, as the Federal Register notice describes, we have been evolving our techniques um, and our outreach and our engagement with tribal nations um, since the development of the 2007 interim guidelines, trying to improve upon that, um, but have heard and, and understand that there is still much room for improvement. And we're absolutely committed to getting that right and ensuring the government to government meaningful consultations happen. And that is a very important area that we are looking for specific input on um, regarding process uh, as it has the utmost importance um, as we conduct the post 2026 effort. Thank you. Our next comment comes from Jim Strogan. You can turn on your mic and your camera if you'd like. Jim, did you have a question? Jim, did you have a question? You can unmute your mic. Yes, thank you. I was having trouble getting it unmuted. Thank you. Um, how will this um, be communicated to the Glen Canyon Dam Adaptive Management Program? 
and how will this stakeholder group be engaged in the effort? Yep, great question. Um, we are very much coordinated with and engaging the adaptive management work group. Um, we will stay very, very important priority to stay very closely coordinated with that group um, as we uh, continue down this road. And if you have specific suggestions or opinions um, on that matter, would encourage you to submit it. Thank you. Just a reminder that the questions need to be about the process and not providing input at this time. And you can submit all comments to crb-info at usbr.gov. At this time, we don't have any more questions. We'll wait just a couple more seconds to see if any more questions come in. We have a question from Jeff Larson. You can unmute yourself and turn on your camera if you'd like. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so I'm a scientist here in Phoenix. I've been studying this problem for about um, five or six years now. I actually have a water blog online um, and I've written a book about this issue, uh, climate change in Arizona. I'm actually a scientist trained at California Tech in Pasadena. It's painfully obvious to me that at this point, with the present rate of drawdown, which you can mathematically calculate very easily over the last several years of both Lake Powell and Lake Mead, that uh, by 2026, if the present drought continues, and we're in a 22 year of a possible 40 or 50 year drought based on the uh, climate ring, tree ring history, um, that we're going to approach loss of Powell and Lake Powell as early as summer of 2023 and potentially Deadpool in one of these lakes, certainly by 2026. It's painfully obvious we cannot conserve our way out of this problem. And to me, desalinization is the only viable opportunity. This was studied in a binational uh, study, I believe about three years ago, four years ago, where they planned a desal plant in the Gulf of Baja, a rather small one, 250,000 acre feet. I, it, it pains me to understand why no one is pushing for this option, including the federal government, given what's happening with these dams. And it's painfully obvious to me that we cannot conserve our way out of this problem, uh, even if we cut agricultural use to, uh, you know, 10 or 20 percent. That's my comment. Thank you for your comment um, and 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 for your the work that you have done looking into this. I would say we we agree with the concern on the dire state of the system, and I, I think the Federal Register notice makes that very clear. Um, we're very focused on the near term challenges, and the notice also um, expressly notes. Um, the fact that we may have to be continuing to manage um, through these real time concerns while simultaneously looking at, at the long term. And with respect to your comment on desalination, um, absolutely uh, uh, would encourage you to submit that through the notice. I think that falls right into kind of that operational strategy area. So thank you for your comment. Thank you everyone for joining us today. This is a reminder if you have input to please submit it by September 1st via email to crb-info at usbr.gov. We'll be, uh, the, this presentation will be available on our website that's been shared in the chat um, shortly after this meeting. And thank you everyone for joining us and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you everyone. Have a nice day.